Welcome to Epic Conquerors. Your host, Dr. Judy Bauer and Chad Smanjack. You are epic. Everything is possible in Christ. The battle is real. The victory is assured. Welcome to all our Epic Conquerors and thank you for joining us once again on the Epic Conqueror podcast. Today, Mama J and I are coming back with, uh, we're going to continue our, our series on Faith Abounds. And Mama J, today we have a special character that we're going to dive in and start to uh, unpack today. We Who really do. <laughs> His story is profound, it's multi layered, multifaceted, uh, ups and downs galore, but he comes out victorious. Hallelujah. And before we tell you who it is, I think Mama J, he'll probably, we could probably call him the first original superhero. Yeah, I would think maybe so. I mean, all of them, like Moses and them, they all had some certain aspect of God's character that was amplified. But this particular person definitely had superhuman powers. (laughs) Superhuman power, superhero. And we're speaking of Samson and the story of Samson and Delilah. It reminds us it's so important to guard our hearts and to follow God's way. You know, when, when we go through the story, Mama J, we come to see how, you know, God has a specific plan for Samson and, you know, through different, like you said, through different life experiences, Samson starts to go astray, but, you know, at the end, it all comes back around. So let's jump right in there, Mama J, and you let you start off with uh, your thoughts on the story of Samson. Well, it picks up from what we've been working on in this series on Faith Abounds out of Hebrews 11. And we have been doing our past episodes on those that are listed, but then it says there in verse 32, and what more could I say to convince you for there's not enough time to tell you of the faith of, and then it lists a few other people. And Samson is in that list. So Chad and I just felt so invigorated in our faith by going through all of these various Bible characters that we decided we're going to go through all these guys. (laughs) So now we're on Samson. But, you know, Samson's story in his beginning is real interesting because similar with uh, Elizabeth and Zechariah for the birth of John the Baptist, they were barren initially, both of them coming from the Levitical ancestry and lineage. So to be barren was to be seen as a curse. So it didn't make sense to them. Like, here, we're your favored. You know, we serve you day and night. How come we can't have a child? You know, everybody else gets a child. You know, We don't have a child. But there's a divine timing sometimes. And in areas of lack in our life, we have to consider that it's possibly a timing issue that God's setting you up for something amazing. So in their case, obviously, it was John the Baptist who was the forerunner of Jesus. What an elevated, awesome calling. In this case, we have another couple who was barren, which was seen by the people as a curse. But again, it's God's timing because he wants to bring forth a son. And how he announces it, like he did with the rest of them, he sends an angel. How awesome is that? You got to love that when that angel shows up. Oh, my gosh. He goes, you know, you're gonna, you've been barren and childless, but you're going to become pregnant. You're going to give birth to a son. But he said, see to it that you drink no wine or other fermented drink and you don't eat anything unclean your son's head is to never be touched by a razor because the boy is to be a nazarite dedicated to god from the womb he will take the lead in delivering israel from the hands of the philistines so they had this strong prophetic announcement over their son so you would think "Woo, this is going to be incredibly amazing <laughs> and so amazing again Mama like we said you know right yeah they have the the kid still hasn't even began, hasn't even begun to form inside the womb. And the angel of God has come down and said, here's the prophetic word of exactly what's going to transpire. And this is why you're going to have this kid, you know? And like you said, there's so many times it's so, it's so the divine timing of God is so critical. It's like everything relies on that because all these things are taking place yet, you know, God's already working and orchestrating the plan that he has to bring about his purpose. Yeah, and you can't outplay, outlast, outwit God. You know, he's the ultimate survivor. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes, Mom, I think like when you put the plan together, God still leaves a lot of little details to just work themselves oh, out. Oh, yeah. So like, yeah, he already had the plan. He already knew that he was bringing Samson, you know, as, as the, um, you know, call it the savior to come and help the suppression. The deliverer, the is- yeah, for the deliverer that the Israelites were feeling. You know, the Philistines were obviously 
you know, treating them terribly. But through that whole process, there's so much more that takes place. I mean, you know, Samson obviously comes, he's got this calling on his life, slowly but surely, you know, he starts to feel great in his own eyes. He gets that pride that starts to swell up inside him. He starts beginning to pursue women and slowly but surely takes his eye off what God's plan is for his life. Yeah, the superhuman strength that God endowed him with was for a specific purpose. And I think that, you know, like with all of us, we have gifts, talents, and abilities that God has innately gifted us with when we're born. Some have a propensity towards art and some have, you know, a bent towards math and science. And we all have different areas that we excel in just by natural instinct that God gives us. In Samson's case, he was given supernatural strength beyond and defies any reasoning. So, yeah, I'm sure when he began to discover <laughs> what he was able to get away with, it was real easy for that to go to his head, so to speak, and become a problem for him. Well, also you always see Mama and Jay, like, yeah, you have Samson. He has all the strength. You know, he's obviously probably a good looking guy. Sure. He's, you know, he's a judge. And, uh, but the enemy is always circling around looking for that one little weakness. So you have there you go. Amazing. Where's that chink in the armor? <laughs> where's that chink? And he's probably looking at Samson going like, where's the weakness in this man? And slowly but surely he starts to pry around and he finds it, right? Samson's weakness is woman. Yeah. Uh, the ego of a man can really be worked easily by the lures of a woman, which, so that's messages on all kinds of levels with that statement right there, but we'll move right along. We only have a short time here. But in this case, what's interesting is in that being lured away, he, she beguiles him and, you know, messes with him emotionally and sexually and in every kind of way to get him to reveal his secret. And so he, because he knows he has a superhuman strength, he's not worried about it. So he just tells her all these different kind of stories. But then she calls the enemy after she does what he tells her to do. And she says, come and get him. He's weak now. And then they come in to take him out. And he just sweeps them up at the floor. You know, <laughs> just. So now he's getting really full of himself with that. But she is persistent, this one just like the enemy's persistent to go after us too. Well, I mean, even you read about his strength, Mama Jay, you know, in a, in previously at the wedding, this, when he's marrying the Philistine woman, and he lands up, he gets so humiliated and angry with the wedding guests that he seeks his revenge and he kills a thousand Philistine men. Yeah. I mean, you know, That's... that kind of strength, obviously, it's kind of like today, you know, money goes to people's head and it changes who they are. You can imagine when some person, some man, can actually go out and take on a thousand Philistine men. And they were warriors. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's not like wimpy people at all. They were like ready for battle in those days brutally. <laughs> and then the story goes on how, you know, Samson then falls in love with this beautiful Philistine woman named Delilah. And for me, Mama Jo, when I read through the story and I'm kind of going back and forth on contrast and looking for analogies, you can see that Delilah represents the whole world, right? And the lure yes. of the world. Yeah. Like for him, it's, it's all those, you know, it's all those things like it's all the shiny objects that we see today. And it slowly but surely grabs his attention. Like today, a lot of things grab our attention. That's so true. And we have to really guard against that. And we don't always see it coming because it's our, it pulls on our heartstrings. It pulls on our emotions. It pulls on our need to keep up with the Joneses, so to speak, and to feel like we've arrived or we have the same as everybody else, all those little intrinsic things that is important to us as human beings. So we get lured away by things that promise us a better outcome. And yeah, we can fall prey for things. <laughs> well, and like you were mentioning earlier, you know, on two different occasions, Samson tells Delilah, you know, this, if you do X, Y, and Z, you know, if you, if he's tied up with seven new bow strings that have never been dried, that, he would lose his strength. So yeah, he seven, tells this. Seven new ropes. I mean, a rope is, you can't break a rope. Just, I mean, so to bind him up with seven new ropes, thick ropes to do that, it defies logic. Yeah. But he knew it would be like breaking a little string, you know? <laughs> so. <laughs> so he goes through that process. He tells her once and then he tells her again. Why do you think the third time he actually tells her the truth? I think sometimes we can 
get worn down in our perhaps disappointment at how things have turned out. Remember, he was already had been brutally betrayed by his first father-in-law, and now he's falling for that again with this woman. But I think sometimes in our lives, we come to places where we get discouraged with things, we get apathetic, we kind of let go of the sacredness of our destiny in God, and we just kind of, you know, oh well. And I think in this case, perhaps that was partially what could have been going on, is that he's already judged Israel for 20 years. He's already, you know, like you said, beat a thousand men. I mean, it's just, after a while, you're just like, ugh, you know. Yeah. I think sometimes as well, as we go through that, and even in today's times, right, the deeper we allow ourselves to get influenced by the world and the worldly things and the glamour and the allurement of all the stuff of the world. Yeah, you know, we let down our guard. You know. Yeah, the slow, you know, slowly but surely we also be, we, we, we let our guard down and we become more blind to what's yeah. truly going on around us. Like you said, yeah. our guard goes down and perhaps he's, you know, that's where, we don't really know, but perhaps that maybe that's where Samson was. It's like you just you get to that point where you drop your guard and boom, there you go. The enemy's just waiting right at the door to come in. Yeah, and these particular guys, when they came in, then they really they I mean they cut his hair, which was the secret sauce. <laughs> it's what uh, was the one caveat or the condition to the blessing of God being on Samson's life. You know, we have conditions that God puts on our life too to stay in the sweet spot with God, you know, that we're walk humbly before the Lord, that we're to keep the main thing, the main thing, all those different kind of things. But sometimes along the way we let go of those things and we think, Oh, maybe they're not that important after all, you know, I seem to be doing fine. All right. By myself. So we kind of start getting back to that big head place where we get in trouble. So that's probably some of the things that was going on here. I think it's also careful that we, we need to be careful because for instance, in this particular story, as Samson was running, running in his lane, doing what God had called him to do, he had the supernatural strength. He had, you know, the judgment, he had everything that he needed to be able to fulfill that calling that God had already put on his life before he was even born. But as he slowly started stepping out of that lane and started losing sight of what God had really called him to do, you know, as a representation, yeah, you see, he loses his strength, like loses his hair. And when he loses his hair, he loses his strength. He basically loses his way and yeah. his purpose. And sometimes we feel invincible, right? God always seems to come through for us. And we have, you know, one thing after the other, that scrape that he got us out of, so to speak. And we kind of have this sense of invincibility that somehow God will rescue me yet again. And we get sloppy with what God has given us and we don't really value it. It's kind of like how um, in the old Testament way back in the beginning, how he sold his birthright for a bowl of porridge. You know, we just didn't understand the value of what he'd been given. So yeah, there's just this big danger zone. <laughs> we have to be careful for. I think that's, I think Mama J, that's, that's probably something that could really have happened right here. He's like Samson. He just started to lose perspective of the true value of this amazing miracle and gift that God had given him. Because like you said, he had been through so many different victories. He had killed a thousand men with his bare hands, you know, and just going through these different processes, it becomes very caviar. And before you know it, you just you know, take it for granted. Yeah, um, I've seen it happen in the ministry a lot, Chad, with pastors and ministers over the 40-something years I've been in full-time ministry, where you can also um, lose sight of the calling that you have and take for granted, and you can let go of the disciplines and the things that brought you into those places. And after a while, you start getting weary of things and tired of things and you're older. And I mean, all these factors start playing in. And then you kind of let go of some of those things that you once held precious. And I think for Samson too, you know, it's like, gee whiz, you know, I've lived a full life. I've done so many amazing things. Now it's my time to get, you know, pleasured and blessed and all of that. And he just let go of his calling for a temporary pleasure and that's a huge danger well and that's something that we discuss on on the in our book club right is how we allow these weeds 
these distractions to coming to our life. You know, even though you're moving forward and you feel that you're still, you know, you're sticking close to the plumb line and you're following God's purpose for your life and all the rest of it, there's these weeds that grow yeah, we're not invincible. alongside you. And that's, this is what was happening as we go through uh, Samson's life. There were these weeds and distractions that were constantly growing within his soil. And before you know it, those weeds have overwhelmed you. Yeah. Chad's talking about the book club we're doing on the book, Unstoppable, Unlocking Your Fullest Potential, which is awesome. We can maybe put that link here in the show notes that you could avail yourself of that ebook of Unstoppable and see what all we're talking about. But it's so true. We see a prime example here of the weedy, thorny soil just really almost taking out someone destined for greatness to deliver the whole nation from the Philistine enemy that threatened to annihilate them. He had a hefty calling, and it was going to require a hefty sacrifice to fulfill <laughs> that calling. Yeah, Mama Jay, for me as well, I get to, what I take out of the story too is that you, know, you see that God – created you for a higher purpose like yes. as we see yeah there's a calling on samson's life right at the gate i mean there's a purpose and a reason for him to come into it and then you also see that you need god's strength to fulfill your calling so it's so important that you don't lose sight like for all of us as we go through our day just our daily activities right sometimes we start to feel like we can do it in our own strength and perhaps, you know, like you say, we start to veer away from the plumb line or these weeds start to grow and start to distract us. But at the end of the day, God will give you the calling, but you're always going to need his strength to see it through to the end. And yeah. even while you're going through that process, there's constantly going to be this opposition. That's always going to happen. That's going to come up and come against you like with, with Samson. You know, all these different distractions. This is constant opposition to try and ensure that you don't receive that or fulfill that calling that God has for you. Yeah, and I think another thing we can look at in this story here is in so many others is that the devil plays dirty. <laughs> he, does, he doesn't play fair, right? So once they cut his hair and he is rendered powerless and they were able to seize him, chapter 16, verse 21 says, and they gouged his eyes out. I mean, they took away his ability to see. And I think that's how the enemy tries to take us out as well. When he is able to grab us in a situation, then what he wants to do is blind us to our purpose and our destiny so that we will totally give up hope and just, you know, succumb to whatever and just let go of the high calling that we have in Christ. So then they set him to a big... Um, wheel to grind out grain for them in the prison so they just enjoyed taunting him and and making him be like a workhorse humiliation slavery oppression now became his lot but what they forgot chad was that the secret that delilah had found out was that this whole supernatural strength was predicated upon or conditional upon the fact that his hair would not be cut so while he's busy doing all this with no eyesight, treading out this wheat on this big millstone that he's pulling, uh, his hair starts growing back. Dun, da, da, dun, da, da. Da, da, da. You would think that would be the one thing that would be shaving that head every single day. <laughs> you would think. So the enemy is not as smart as he thinks. The Bible says if he'd have known, he would not have crucified the Lord of glory. So he doesn't get it always. You know, he's pretty strategic in a lot of ways, but... God always has his trump card or his ace card to play. And in this case, as his hair began to naturally grow out, the supernatural power of God also began to come back and infuse him. And I'm sure in his blindness, it really caused him to be so inward then to humble himself before God and realize, I blew this, God help me. <laughs> and even through that whole process, Mama Jay, like you said, at the beginning, he was... He had the calling and God had you know, brought him into this world to fulfill this calling. And then all these different things that transpire as he gets through there, the zig and the zag. But at the end, he comes right back to the purpose that he's actually put on this, on this earth for, right? And he's standing there in the temple between these two pillars and he's praying to God for strength. Yeah, this temple that they had brought him to. So the, this temple was a place where the God of Dagon was worshipped. It was the God of grain and harvest to them. It was where they did a lot of human sacrifice. 
It's where they would parade their prisoners. And of course, he would have been one of their prime catches uh, before the people and humiliate them in front of the people, torture them and do all kinds of horrible things just to make fun of the prisoners that they had. So while they're doing all of this and parading um, Samson around, you know, he begins to negotiate with God about how could he, you know, when we repent, we're supposed to do works of repentance. So in other words, how can I get back into my calling God? <laughs> What's the strategy? <laughs> And yeah, you see it right, you know, besides, uh, you know, despite all the Samson's weaknesses and you know, everything they had been through, right at this moment, he turns back to God before, just before he's about to die, really, and he repents and says, God, use me once more, use me once more mightily to fulfill that purpose that you had brought me up for. Yeah, and he asked one of the young guys that was supposed to kind of parade him around, he, he kind of, you know, just draws on his little empathy and he goes could you just like put me in between the pillars and just let me rest my hands on the pillars <laughs> so the kid or whoever it was sure you know what there's no danger in that like who could knock those pillars down i mean when they built in those days massive massive monumental structures they were like beyond defying how you could even move one pillar, let alone two pillars to bring down the whole structure. But nevertheless, God was going to anoint him with supernatural God given power beyond understanding to bring down that uh, idol God and all of his human sacrifice, all of that. You know, that gives us courage today, Chad, with all of this abortions that it's been allowed around the world and all the human sacrifice that goes on with that the human trafficking that's everywhere with young children being snatched and used for all these horrific things this stinks in the nostrils of god the word of god says you know if you mess with one of god's little ones these innocent ones it's better for you that a millstone be hung around your neck and you'd be thrown into the deepest ocean never to come up again you know god says their angels are always you know, watching over them. So you really are putting yourself in a precarious situation. And I think in this state as well, the Philistines were just so full of themselves and their evilness. And so God was going to now fulfill the destiny that he had spoke to his parents about Samson's life and really position him to literally be the deliverer of his people from this evil Philistine army of people. I think it's such a great story of redemption right at the end, mm. you know, all the amazing things. Cause sometimes we get stuck on, you know, the, the negative part of Samson's life, but there were a lot of great aspects about Samson oh. throughout his, I mean, yeah. it's a long, beautiful story. If you start it from the beginning and go through, you know, but the story tends to focus on the whole incident with Delilah and the whole thing. But at the end of the day, when you look, take a, much bigger perspective and you see how that all transpired and then you see God's hand weaving through it and then bringing him right to the end and then allowing him as such a you know general of the faith army right yes. at the end he comes to his basically comes to his end and he says God let me just do this last thing and he seeks God and he leans in and he repents and God gives him that ability to basically fulfill that calling. And to me, that yeah, is such an amazing. took down the whole story. thing. I mean, that's just so phenomenal. And then like we've said on a past podcasts on this Faith Abound series, with all these different amazing people that are in Hebrews chapter 11, they're all their stories like our own. We all have places where we've messed up, where we wish we wouldn't have done this or done that or said this or did that or whatever. But at the end of the day, these guys are all in this wonderful Hall of Faith chapter, Hebrews 11, being commended by God for their faith. And so that should give us all hope as epic conquerors that, you know, we will mess up. And sometimes that's important for us to mess up because it can humble us and or it will make us, you know, more bitter, whatever. We don't want to go that direction. But if we will <laughs> humble ourselves in the situation, God will rise us up again and lesson learned, hopefully, then we will behave ourselves more properly and be able to even accomplish more in that next season than we would have prior. So uh, God uses all of it, the mistakes and the mess ups, as well as our victories to form and fashion us. 
but just to be commended by God. We don't have to fear the judgment of God as born again children of God. When we humble ourselves before the Lord, repent. The blood of Jesus covers us from all unrighteousness, not a little bit, not some of it, but all of it. All of and it. then we can be commended by God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Rejoice. <laughs> and you see that theme, Mama Jack, that runs through pretty much all of these stories that we've gone through is that humbling effect. And I think sometimes that's what's needed because, you know, when God, when God gives you that ability and he blesses you and he gives you the ability to, to, to be successful and to have these miracles happen in your life, sometimes we can, you know, overshoot and get a little prideful and then he'll bring you back down. And when he's doing that, he's really preparing you for the big miracle, which is a calling like he did with Samson, right? Yeah. That's right. Uh, and it really strengthens our spiritual backbone, if you will. And it actually infuses us with courage and with a dependency on God that's so important because at the end of the day, we need to give God all the glory and not take it for ourselves, which sometimes we can think that we're all that in a bag of chips. <laughs> and, we, <laughs> and, that, and that's epitomized in this story, right? Yeah, because Samson was getting to that point where he felt it was all about him. Invincible. You know, he had yeah. lost, he's like, I'm Samson, and this is, I'm the greatest, I'm the strongest, I'm all these things. And then he gets humbled down, and right at the end, the miracle happens in a way that no one, no one can take any um, credit, credit for it, except for the fact that God showed up and he allowed that to happen. So it's so powerful. I think there's one other little aspect I'd love to bring out in this particular little story, but how when the angel said he would be a Nazarite and take the Nazarite vow to that vow means that you're separated, set apart for the work of the Lord. It was a term that was used predominantly to identify the Jewish people that believed that Jesus was the Messiah. And then when that sect of the Nazarenes branched out into the Gentiles, that's when they first became known as Christians. And Jesus was born in the city of Nazareth, so he was called a Nazarene. And there's a whole denomination called the Nazarenes. And the beginning place of that was an understanding of my life is set apart for God. So may we all take that Nazarene vow, if you will, to realize that our lives are set apart for the Lord and that our dependency needs to be upon him, whether we're abased or whether we're abounding, keep leaning in on him, dependent upon him. That way we will come through without even the smell of smoke. We will come through victorious, unstoppable. Even if we mess up along the way, God will then move us forward to where we need to be. Wow. Well, with that, we're going to move right into what our epic conqueror weapon spotlight for the week is or for this episode is. And for me, Mama J, mine is going to be, after going through the whole thing and just looking at the story, is repentance, the power of repentance for Samson right at the end when he repents. And God gives him that opportunity. You know, he says, I've forgotten everything you've done. Let's finish the job. Yeah. Oh, that's powerful. I think as our two-edged sword, which we so often do, mine would be dependence on God. Because once we humble ourselves, that's literally our posture then as we know, I'm not doing this in my strength. I'm doing this in God's strength alone. And he gets all the glory. So that two-edged sword of repentance and then bowing that knee and being dependent upon God is so important for all of us as Christians, no matter what our level of self-worth is at the time. Because some of our epic conquerors might be going through a season right now where you just absolutely absolutely failed at whatever it is that's in front of you and you're feeling so worthless and so undone and so without significance but take heart because God is with you and when you repent and say Lord I'm so sorry and then just depend upon the Lord to bring you out he will with that high arm of victory bring you out up to that next level of victory and so there's a lot of encouragement for all of us and then maybe some of our epic conquerors are in a season of tremendous victory. I mean, you're, you're just like have a green thumb spiritually. You know, everything's just going for it. You know? Be careful of the danger zone of being lured <laughs> away into things that are going to not be good for you. And keep your dependence on the Lord and keep being in that repentive heart. Like Chad said, that's a powerful spiritual weapon to always be repentive and dependent upon the Lord. That will help us avoid hitting our head against the brick wall extra times. <laughs> Keep realigning to the plumb line. 
There you go. <laughs> That's the thing right there. <laughs> That's the thing. Be quick uh, to battle, repent. Be quick to come back. Yeah. Battle Crown Mama J, as always, is I am epic. Epic. Because everything is possible in Christ. Yes, it is. This, this week's power affirmation is I have, uh, I have a repenting heart. Ooh, I like that. I have a repentive heart. Okay, Epic Conquerors, you know how we do this. We drum roll on the count of three. We all shout it out loud. That's uh, our praise and our affirmation to the Lord, right? I am epic. And then I have a repentive heart towards god that's really an epic affirmation so here we go drum roll everybody one two three i, I am, am epic, epic. I, I have a repentive heart. heart towards <laughs> god Woo. Woo. that's going to be our safety that's our life raft that's our lifeline <laughs> to have a repentive heart towards god and then from there, then rise up, shake the dust off your feet, go forth and conquer in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Oh, that's powerful. Now, we just want a quick reminder for all of our wonderful Epic Conqueror community that we drop new episodes every Monday and Friday. You can find us on our website, Epic Win for You, the number four, the letter U, and dot com. And then also we have our wonderful Epic Conqueror Facebook group where I do Facebook lives and posts in there and what have you. So we'd love to have you join us there. And also our Epic Conqueror video cast, where you can watch Chad and I as we record these epic podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> if that's your thing. <laughs> yeah, and you can see what our face is doing while we're talking, but it's kind of fun. So we have all of that that we would just love to bless you with. And just thank you so much for helping us to move this podcast forward so that others can listen. I counted up the other day. Our podcasts are reaching into over 24 countries right now. So that's really wow. epic. We give God all the thanks for that. Yes, thank keep you, passing it along because people are being blessed by that. Somebody just posted in our Facebook group today. They just listened to the podcast this morning and it just really gave them what they needed to move ahead in their life. So we thank God for that. What's your last yeah, takeaway, Chad? Hey, this was a powerful you know subject today. Such a great one. You know, Mom Jay, like you were, you mentioned, uh, you were talking about, uh, you know, being in the fiery furnace and so many times we feel like we've been thrown in that fiery furnace. Yeah. And you know, when you're in that fiery furnace, sometimes it's important just to seek that fourth man, right? The fourth man that was in the furnace, Jesus. Yeah. I recognize he's in there with you. You're not alone. You know, he's in there. No matter what the mess looks like, how difficult or, you know, whatever you're going through, just look, realize that God's with you. Jesus is with you. And if you, and if just you stick close to him, to him, Chad, he'll keep you cool in the midst of the heat. <laughs> and you'll walk out of there without the smell of smoke. That's so right. Yeah. That's my takeaway, Mama that's Jay. Just it. lean in, lean in, always lean in. Whenever, whenever times are difficult and when, they, and when they're not difficult as well, like you said, sometimes when things are great, just continue to lean in. Yeah. There's a danger on both sides of the coin, right? Both sides of the ditch that's where it. we have to just be careful. And that's why it says the way to the kingdom of heaven is a narrow road <laughs> and we got to stay on that narrow path. And in that narrow path, we'll find life, joy, peace, and abundance of the presence of God. Whew, that's worth Whew, everything. That's worth it, everything. Yeah. All right. On that note, I guess it's that time. <laughs> <where> we say <laughs> ciao for now. Ciao for now. <laughs> All right, ciao everybody. Love you a lot. Ciao.